I didn't say a word. I got up, walked over, and just kicked a decoy 50 yards across the woods. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> You're shooting like your mother. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Man, it's almost food plot season, Jared, and Deer Grow is one of those products that has really changed the way that we plant food plots and the success we've seen from them. No doubt. I've been, you know, trying to plant food plots my, my entire you know, whitetail hunting career, which is a little shorter than yours. But the minute that I started or that I, you know, I realized that I could get Deer Grow back into some of these remote plots where I couldn't get lime or fertilizer, especially in the 50 pound bag you know, format, mm-hmm. so everything was changed. You know, I could get into these spots uh, moving forward with a, with a backpack sprayer and that since escalated to these 40 or 60 uh, gallon sprayers and we're doing upwards of you know five to ten acre food plots just with your grow and having phenomenal success yeah and i mean with the price of fertilizer lime diesel everything this year i mean what better way to get in there and grow a successful food plot at about a third of the cost check out deer grow at deergrow.com and we're back hey yep. on our podcast episode 89 yes 89 89 uh still august 11th <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, in fact, I'm wearing the same t-shirt. I thought about oh, it earlier. I, do. I was like, ah, forget it. <laughs> uh, after after a belly full of Mexican food, I'm just not mm, going to change my shirt. So many chips. So many chips. And Nick, salsa. did you notice I just dove right in? I, everybody else was trying to be polite. They didn't want to dig into the chips. Gonna, I'm like, who's yeah. going to do this? Yeah, he's like, yeah, this is your bowl. Like chips I'm, over here. You made Nick and I share a bowl. Yeah, I'm glad you <laughs> yeah. set the tone, though. Like, yeah, I, I, get yeah. I like to do that yeah. for people. I just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, he's going to eat a f- at least a full basket before the waiter even gets here. Well, yeah, I asked for more before mine were gone. I said, hey, why don't you keep them chips coming? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this, it's so end of th- August? 30th. Whoa. I think. Well, August 30th? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm going to be killing a velvet Kentucky buck in, like, four days. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be gearing up, man. I'll be washing my gear. Well, it's washed, but... Meh. Yeah, packing everything up and be here before you know it. As long as the weather's good. It's well, knowing that we're recording this and it's 79, we're pro- you're probably listening to this and it's like 99 degrees cuz that's just how shit's going to go. Yeah. But hopefully your food plots are looking good. If not, you've got time to save them with cereal grains. Cereal grains. Cereal grains. What were you supposed to remind me of today? Go to Rural King. Go to Rural King and get my oats. I did. It's not over yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I reminded myself. It's oh, fine. Yeah. So yeah, you've got time to save your plots. I'll go up there. Um, and yeah, in certain states like Kentucky, you're gonna be killing deer. And pretty soon we've got Ohio and Pennsylvania opening up. Kansas is opening up. I'll be in Colorado. Oh my god! An elk. This could be. This is like we're so close to September. It's ridiculous at this point. I'm gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge. Um, so we have a guest today. Because the last podcast you listened to was just Jared and I, if I did my math right. We're at 89? Holy shit. We're going to be at 100 podcasts in. Pretty soon. If you're listening to this for the first time, you're probably thinking, how in the hell did these guys do almost 100 podcasts? We did. That's a fair question. And it took <coughs> uh, almost year. two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the one. Two a week. One two week. years. Yes. So uh, this is next time will be 90 if I did the math correctly. Mm-hmm. And it'll be September. Wow, good timing, mm-hmm. good timing. Um, but yeah, we have a guest this week. Uh, he's our Amish whisperer from Ohio, Ben Rising, uh, who was out logging this morning, probably. Two Amish whispers in a row. We had Don Higgins on. Oh, we did last week. My well, Bill and Tyler separated them. Oh, yeah, and us. That's right. We're not necessarily Amish whispers. No, we Amish yeller. <laughs> Coincidentally, if you're thinking like, oh, at least the Amish will never uh, listen to this, they will. Um, oh, yeah. They will listen to this via a telephone, Busy usually. Busy Beaver hotline. <laughs> yes. Yep. Or sometimes, apparently, they See, have They think Amazon. we don't know about the Busy Beaver hotline. Our, our, uh, we know. We know. Our, yeah, we know. Uh, our Pennsylvania boys have a YouTube channel, which I don't know how that's possible, but we'll have to get clarification on that. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, we have been rising on today. Uh, we're going to talk to Ben about, uh, I think we'll continue our 200 inch discussion a little bit uh, of how many 200s are in the United States. Yep. Probably some baiting discussions because we talked about that last week. Yeah. And, Let's get them on, dude. All right. And Ben Rising joining us on the Hunter Podcast. 
What's up, dude? Great. How are you guys doing today? Feels more like fall out there today. Yes, it does. It's a nice cool down. No mm-hmm. humidity. Mm-hmm. It's like a little slice of heaven today. Mm-hmm. I saw a picture of uh, a buck on, I don't know what it was, something that uh, that got killed right outside of uh, Millersburg. I think oh, it yeah. Got hit by a car. Pure yeah. De- yeah. Definitely 200. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. and every, everybody was hunting that deer. Uh, yeah. I was hunting that deer. <laughs> I need to know Ben's yeah. opinion on the 200 question. Oh, yeah. Let's start off with that. This this is an ongoing debate. We've now stretched this like four podcasts. But all right, Ben, so here's here's the question. Obviously. Just start with the, the straight up qu- question. How, okay. many, how many? How how many gross 200-inch bucks do you think are in the state of Ohio right now? Oh, jeez. He he gave uh, he gave you some slack. The question to me was in the United States. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, I figured let's start with Ohio, All right. right? I mean, Ohio. Let's see. <laughs> How many do you have on camera? One, two. I have I have zero. I haven't. I have not. I swear to you, I've not had a two hundred inch deer on camera since two thousand twelve. Wow. So uh, okay. So let me put Jared's out there. Jared was basically projecting one out of every fifteen thousand bucks being. 200 inches or bigger don't ask us how we got to that number but well we started big so in the u.s there's 30 million million deer Mm -hmm. white tails we said if 30 percent of them are bucks 40 i think 40 percent of them that's 90 90 million nine million nine million bucks Mm -hmm. and then how did i get it from there i think you said there was 150 bucks 150 per state Mm -hmm. something like that i was gonna i was trying to remember how many counties are in ohio (sighs) There's 40, 50, 90 some or 90 some counties, I mean. 80 or so. I can't remember. I'm trying to think of the number, how high the numbers go on license plates that I've seen. We'll figure it out here. My, my county's 38, but our license 88 plate? counties in Ohio. 88. Okay. Yep. So if I would say not, I would say if you take on average 88 counties times at least two to three yeah. per county. Yeah. Okay. Now you're, you're yeah. in Jared's territory. Agreed. So you're like 150 <clears throat> at least per state. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah, there you go. Agreed. 200s. Yeah. I, I mean, and there's probably some counties that don't have any. Sure. But then probably some counties that have three or four. Yeah. Um, if you go into Franklin County in Columbus, there's probably 10. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I like it. So, it, yeah. It, we've been but kinda, I think that's a good way to somewhat gauge. You yeah. Know? Well, I think the hard part is, you know, people always relate it to what's killed, right? How many 200s have been killed? You know, so we were talking about Pennsylvania. There's like 120,000 bucks killed a year. Maybe two of those bucks are 200 inches or bigger. Yeah. You know, now that's... Which is kind of crazy to think if there's 150, which maybe it's a little lower in PA than well, in Ohio. And but. so, and obviously Ben hunts Kansas. So Kansas was the big discussion there, Ben, where right, there's t- so, much, subject this year. so much ground, like those bucks could be anywhere, you yeah. know? I'm yeah, sure that's a true. Lot. And I mean, like the part of Kansas I hunt, you know, I killed one 200 inch there. I never seen another one. I've never even seen another deer in any of those farms that I hunt that was over 170. Really? You know? Maybe I, I might have saw one that was, you know, I've never killed another. I've killed a, a 160s there mm-hmm. since. I've killed a deer every year. Now, last year there was a um, a 226 killed. Um, Monster. Right there where I was hunting. And, you know, we, I didn't have pictures of it, but uh, they had, Travis and them had pictures of it. The guy that mm-hmm. on our team that yeah. has the lease, but one of their hunters killed it. <laughs> Well, Ben, if you think about that, like in Kansas, especially because Jared and I were talking about this, like not that, I mean, you think about the number of Ohio hunters and the the number of deer space in Ohio, like I'm not going to say you're going to get a picture of every 200 incher, but damn well, people probably in, in, out there have seen the 200 inchers that roam in Ohio. Kansas is one of those states where, I mean, I think a 200 incher could be buried somewhere that nobody knows. Oh yeah. And I think same with like Iowa and Illinois, even some of those deer get yeah, they get off into those prairie areas and out in those little ditches and yep. crevices, and you know sometimes they come back, you know sometimes they don't. But um, Ohio has such big, vast timber areas. I don't think people realize, you know, like mm-hmm. PA is just enormous amounts of timber. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you know there could be some really big deer in those 
I'm sure there um, are. So, yeah. You know, and he, you know, but yeah. 200 is just that. I mean, you know, we all know what that, that's just so hard to get to. Mm-hmm. It takes special genetics. It takes age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it takes everything. Like, yep. Yeah. It just seems like we put it, we started trying to put a number to it and we're like, it's still the, the unicorn, right? It's the rarity, but you know, there's more of them than you think out there when you, when you start putting numbers to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say there probably is, you know, just a matter of being the guy that knows where one is or being able to find one, like, you know, and mm-hmm. it drives me insane because I have not even, I haven't seen one. I haven't been able to hunt one since 012, you know. I mean, that 226 that was in Kansas last year, that was kind of a a weird deal. So, like, I really didn't get – I didn't try to get close to that deer because I didn't want to make anybody mad. Sure. You know what I mean? So, I was on the same farm in general. It was a 400-acre farm, but I wasn't anywhere near that where that deer was going to walk through. You know, I knew that. I mean, Ben, in your your area of Ohio, I would expect there to be some pretty damn good deer. I mean, why do you think it's been since – 2012 that you know you haven't had eyes on one because i just i lose all the four-year-olds there you go well dude that's the next question is how many future 200s like oh sickening all the time right there you go like so and i'm not knocking people to shoot them what i'm trying to say is is like so if i go back trail cam history like when i was heavily outfitting back in 08 09 and you know all the way up until 2012 and 13 i mean i outfit until 2016 but yep. you know <laughs> that reminds me <laughs> in the in 9 and 10 11 area i would have 5 6 deer over 170 every year on camera on those different farms and i would typically have at least one deer in the 90s not always 200 but yeah i'd always have a pretty good one <laughs> You know, crazy. Ben, I ran into your buddy uh, Tim Woods at the White Tail Properties. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, we were just you know bullshitting a little bit, and and uh, he gave you some. Uh, what do you call it? It's, it, it in love he goes yeah. well the problem with ben he's like the reason ben could, was you know got out of outfitting or whatever was he wanted to always shoot the biggest buck <laughs> <laughs> he's like we got all these deer for clients that's our business he's like the problem with ben is he always wanted to shoot them <laughs> yeah well i looked at it like this and i was straight up with people because people would say well it seems like you always shoot the biggest deer and i was like damn right i do <laughs> because i'm freaking the one taking care of all those leases you know, you know about me because the TV, that's why you want to hunt here. Yeah. So in order for me to still be Ben rising and what people expect of Ben rising, then I need to kill a big deer. That's My it. passion is giant deer. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm not going to give up a 200 incher for three grand. Well, yeah, dude, that's you're not, 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 not going to put team. it up on Nor a, would I. on a T to let somebody T ball it off of there. Like you're going to go kill yeah. that damn thing. Well, I'm exactly the same. But, I could never run an outfit for that reason. I'd be the one killing for sure. It. Yeah, but many, many people killed beautiful bucks, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. Mm-hmm. You know, Nick Munt killed his biggest deer with I me at one that. point. Yep. Yeah. You know, um, we, we killed lots of big deer, you know, and there was a lot of times, though, I wouldn't hunt the biggest deer, you know, as far as like certain farms. But, you know, they were getting to be a real rarity. So and I and I was never smarty about it, but I would straight up tell people like, well, you know, honestly, if there's a 200 inch deer, I'm going to hunt it. Like that's <laughs> all there is to it, you know, and it would, it would hurt some people's feelings. They wouldn't book, but I, not everybody felt like that. Sure. Some people understood it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. anybody who truly uh, wants I, to kill big I quit outfitting more or less for one, there was no money in it unless you wanted to mm-hmm. abuse your land. Yep. And yeah. Basically take some hardworking guy's money knowing he was not going to have a crack at a really good deer. Yeah. He would see deer, but would he see what he's really paying for? It got to the point where no, it wasn't. So I was like the best worst outfitter ever. My percentage of kills was incredible mm-hmm. and opportunity rate, but I didn't make money doing it because I wouldn't hunt enough people. Right. Yeah. So I was paying all this stupid money for leases yep. and food and lodging and all this effort and, you know, help and things like that. And I just, I just wouldn't take it to the level to where I could, I could have been like every other outfitter here in Ohio, yep. you know, that takes 300, 
hunters, yep. you know, on 5,000 acres. Are you kidding me? Yep. You know, like that's just not, you know, people will text me and ask me, Hey man, do you, do you have any outfitters you recommend in Ohio? Like, no, I don't, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's maybe two. Well, it's because they're One running, time. they're running a business, not running what's best for that hunter and that yeah. deer. And so I, the, the ones that I can tell you that I know are good is real McCoy mm-hmm. boys know what they're doing yep. and they have a lot of their own ground. Yep. So they don't have to sell a gazillion hunts right. to make it work. Cause they're not they're timber the people. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're timber people. They're good guys. They know deer and they have huge deer down there in Adams County. Um, yep. so people like that would be the people I would seek out to, is an outfitter mm-hmm. Ty McCombs in Licking County. He runs a lot of guys, but Ty always has some big deer. He's not greedy about, he doesn't overhunt his farms. Mm-hmm. So like, those are like the two people, <laughs> you know, that I know that produce good deer every year. You know, the people I used to work with here close to me, uh, Jared Hawkins and them, I mean, they have some good deer. I don't have no idea how many hunters they take now. It's not or sustainable. Anything, but, but our area in general is just beat up now because yeah. the parcels are getting smaller. There's a lot of outfitters all of a sudden right around here. Um, and the age class just really struggles to get to where it needs to be to, mm. for those deer to get to giants. If that's what people really want, you know, yeah. a lot of the guys that, you know, are killing the four year olds that I'm trying to get to five and six are ecstatic to kill them, which I understand. Sure. But man, those deer could be giant, just insane. Well, you know, I th- I've got one. I think you get these people, and, and no knock to them, but you, it, Ohio is one of those states. I'm, I'm it's not over- killing a four year old. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's over the counter. You're getting a lot of people from the South coming to Ohio because it's over the counter. To them, that is mis- Midwestern hunting. Um, you can bait in Ohio. Like, there's a lot of from, things I mean, that's from all over. People, people come from PA. Yeah, too. from PA, West from Virginia, Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Yep. Northeast. Yep. Yeah. Pull I mean, it, and, and I get it. I mean, again, it's it's such a you know, cause I'm like the last person that wants to divide us as hunters. So I don't typically say much, you know, I mean, yeah, it hurts you in the gut, you know, it sucks sure. when, you know, you've been watching a three or a four year old for a long time and, you know, watched him get to the status that he is. And, you know, like I've got one this year that I'm just going to cry when he gets shot, Yeah. but I'm not going to shoot him. I'm, yeah. I just won't. I mean, I, I'm not going to be that guy. I mean, he's, he's probably 170 right now and, uh, he's a four year old got a big drop time split stickers i mean and from the jump he made from and i told my buddy last year this year's gonna be a, a stud so yeah. he's got special genes and this year the mass and the amount of time he's put on is just insane next year he's 200 all day long yep well and you he's know? not gonna get there if you kill him at 170 this well, year. well that's what i mean so it's like i'm not gonna shoot him i'm hoping the neighbors can get on the same page will they i have no idea you yeah. know, I mean, but it's tough very to few people that. would pass. This there's deer. no way, dude. There's so yeah. few people. There's even there's probably more people that say they will pass the deer that won't pass. Well, the deer they'll than... say that they'll pass a 150, 160. They've never really seen a 150, 160 up close, and then they the only way to yeah. the only way to learn that's that exactly too is the right what you're saying. Yeah, man, that is the truest thing. Like so many guys are like they hear these numbers, yep, you know, and they see pictures, yep, but until they're Based with a 150 or a 160 at 25 yards, it looks like it's 250 inches to them. hundred percent. They're, they're not passing it, you know, and that's no knock to them. I mean, there's days that I'm still in that category, mm-hmm. you know, that that buck <laughs> comes blowing in and I'm like, I'm going to kill him, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, but I mean, like I, I lost a deer this past year. It was a beautiful six by six. Um, and we were just so excited to see this deer, you know, and the, the guys that bordered it said, oh yeah, well, we'll pass them too, you know, and they had, they did, they were passing them. Well, then their mom got in the blind and muzzle loader season and blew the freaking thing down. Damn it, mom. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what gives? And yeah. they're like, well, you know, it was her biggest deer. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, wait a minute. We're either passing or we're not. Right. So like we could have killed that deer any day. Like my son would have been his biggest deer, but I didn't even let him shoot it. Yeah. Well, and that, that's the big thing, man. Uh, you start getting into these discussions, and it's not everybody. There are some people that will pass things, but people are real quick to throw around, yeah, I'm not shooting anything smaller than 150 this year, and they get put in front of a, a high 140s deer, and they, they smoke it. They don't even hesitate. Yeah. yeah, which, again, you know, like I said, it's it's one of those things where they're just deer, but, 
you know, guys like, you know, you and I, and I mean, you know, we just take it so serious that sure. it's different to us. It's painful, um, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a rear year round thing. And I mean, it, again, you can't, you know, you're going to lose some, yep. but it still never makes it easier for a guy like me to watch no. one that, you know, could be a potential giant. Um, but I, you know, honestly, I'm that I go to, when I go out of state, if I'm in Kansas and I know I only got five days, 145, 154 year old walks by, I'm smoking it. A hundred percent. So, same. you know, I, I'm kind of like guilty of the same thing. So it's, I can't sit here and yeah. be a hypocrite and, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not, yeah. I know I never get mad at those people, but I do get mad if they say, well, we'll pass it. And then they don't. Oh well, yeah. How, how many chances will you give Ben? I mean, I, it's situational with different neighbors and stuff, but like we've just learned the hard way of when somebody says they'll pass something and they don't. And it's like, okay, well, you know, one time is it happens. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe just something happened two times. It's like, you know, what, what can we do? At some point, you just have to stop sharing information or just, just you know, un yeah. understand that they're not going to be on board with it. Well, you know, believe it or not, I mean, like, I've really had good luck with my neighbors, most of them. It's typically the, the people that don't own land that are like are bordering your farm or your lease. They just got permission to hunt a small piece and they're dumping corn. Yeah. They will shoot whatever. Now, typically the people that own ground next to something I might have, or they also lease and are investing money. They are the best ones. Like even, even like, you know, um, you know, I, and I, I really do believe like here it's getting better. It's starting to come back because enough of the Amish are buying the dirt around here. Mm-hmm. That's basically who, who is buying it all, but they're all kind of getting better about the, the land management. You know, they've, they've got this bad rap Amish do of being horrible, you know, really? just kill everything. And, but here around us, it's a little different. Sure. You know, these guys are really serious about it. And, you know, um, a lot of them have Don Higgins come and walk their properties, you know, and, and, and which I think Amish is great because whisper. it kind of, it kind of helps get things. And I think that's helping. And so I actually have some neighbors that, you know, happen to be Amish fellows, but they're good friends of mine and we get along great, you know, and I do share information with them and they, and they pass here, but like when they get to a certain point, it's hard to even ask them like, well, can you pass that deer? Sure. You know, cause that's tough to ask somebody to pass 170. It spot. becomes a ridiculous request. Well, yeah. How do you do and that? And I mean, we've had this discussion about not, not necessarily picking on the Amish by any means, but there definitely seems like there's some groups or communities that have that mindset, Ben, where they're following Higgins and they're having them out the property. They're growing big bucks. In fact, a lot of Somebody the ones, wrote us on Instagram the other day. They're like, Oh, Hey, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. They're like, no, we want to grow big bucks. Well, too. Yeah. And the, when I was in Mississippi, a lot of that, those guys were the same way. I mean, they were only killing 170s plus yeah. and then it seems like there's other places where there's 15 guys wide blown through the woods shooting anything that moves yeah and i think it and i think that goes with any culture i don't think it's just the amish 100%. you know i mean if i had to say now i would say more of the amish care about shooting big bucks than what we call the english yeah. you know I truthfully so. anymore <laughs> i think they're more dedicated to it um, because they're investing a lot of money in land over here. Yeah. And I think a lot of them have realized they just can't have everybody in their whole family killing bucks. Yeah. I would know, agree on a hundred acres or 200 acres or 50 acres or, you know, but just in general across the Midwest land is changing because of the parcels, That's you know, it, people man. are buying, 100%. you know, smaller parcels, you know, farms are getting busted up. All these realty companies and auction companies are doing everything they can to milk every last dollar out of a farm. So they busted up umpteen million ways to make it go to where they can get the most, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we see that all the time. I mean, people will talk about subdividing a farm and it's like, you know, why? And they're like, well, cause instead of 4,000 acre, I'll get six because it's smaller parcels. There's more buyers. I get it, but like, what are you trying to do here? If you want to kill a big buck, you need to keep that baby intact, you know. Or, or if yep. somebody wants to buy it to kill a big buck, subdividing is not the way to go. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean, it's everywhere anymore. I mean, you know, I think <clears throat> we honed in kind of this morning talking about Ohio a little bit in that, you know, batting back and forth on the whole baiting thing because obviously, uh, again, you can kill a mature buck on bait, but. It comes back to how many of these really good three-year-olds, especially, are getting smashed on a bait pile that two years from there could be 180s, well, 190s. Due to our conversation about like the future 200s, I don't know if they would actually make it to 200, but every year 
you know, on our Ohio farm, I'm like, dude, that thing is a dandy. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's 150s. always a three. We always have 150, 163 year old or two or three of them. And every year they get killed every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, man, if, if even one well, of Well, they just go running in, you know, they don't, they're, they're, they're raised on corn piles. hundred percent. So they don't have any, you know, um, fear of them. Yep. Uh, I swear to you, I thought about like, putting corn piles out on some of my farms and leases and just start scaring the crap out of these deer every time they come into them, like <laughs> let them get, you know, settled into them. And then a season comes in just start <laughs> yeah, blowing rubber darts at them or something out your bow. And like, just, I don't know, like trying to make them scared of it because it, that's what happens. You know, they're, it, you know, these guys are like, so excited to kill a big deer over a corn pile. Yep. You know, like, like they achieve something that's like, it's not hard. Well, and I mean, like, I think that's where most of these three year olds go. I mean, they get smashed on a corn pile. Well, that even the big ones, man, when it gets super cold here in Ohio, oh, yeah, late season. Not, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. If you're, if you're I mean, within eyesight, two, I know of two, two hundreds last year in January that died within a week. Crazy. It got to be so brutal snow and cold. And they just couldn't take it. They went in and they got shot. Well, so that know? that spawns the question, Ben. How good do you think Ohio would be without baiting? Oh, it would blow your mind. Yep. That that's why I think the big thing was so like when I was early on in outfitting, like I was talking, baiting was it just wasn't that big here yet. Mm-hmm. Now it's like insane. Like yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 an astronomical number that it would be for the amount of corn dumped on the ground in Ohio, Mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, I I totally feel like it should be okay to supplemental feed deer in the off season. Yeah. You know, if you want to give them protein and some corn and do things like that, have mineral licks, I'm all for that. Sure. I'm not for any more the hunting it. I just, am not Yeah. like, I just don't think it's right. I think these deer become too easy. Do you think that Ohio has the resources to pull it back? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know that answer because I'm not connected enough with the people, but I know it's such a, a revenue generator right now that the only way I would ever see it getting reached, you know, reversed is if they, if it's a disease or yeah. in a deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what we talked about this morning is like, you know, once the cat's out of the bag like that, how do you pull back in? You know, Well, I mean, you just watch these TV shows just like Kansas. Yep. You know, like, you watch these guys and this all of a sudden this deer comes walking in real weird and he's looking around and all of a sudden he sticks his head behind a big log. Yeah. You know, it's a corn he's, pop. He's not, yeah. He's not eating rocks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's in the middle of like poverty grass and he's eating, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it, it's like, that's why I think people like our show so much is because you know, we're actually trying to teach people how to kill deer sure. the real, real world way. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, I use Don Higgins thing, real world, but like real style, just, yeah. you know, like that's why I love hunting Illinois and Iowa and, you know, places that you cannot bait deer because it's you against them on their turf, you yeah. know, and in Ohio, it's just, you know, we, I've talked about it till I'm blue in the face on podcasts, but you know, people know where I stand on it, but it, you know, it's just tough. Like if you don't have a feeder or some kind of bait on your farm anymore, you can plant all the food plots you want. They're going to walk right through them and go to the neighbor's big time pile. hundred percent. Yeah. You well, know. and I think that's the the thing that we discussed is that, you know, a bunch of us would probably say, yeah, that's fine. Let's just not do it. The neighbor's still going to do it next door. And then this neighbor's going to do it. And if you're not doing it, you know, again, all those potential big bucks are going to get smashed. Yeah. Well, there was, there was a three year period that they stopped baiting in a couple township areas in my county okay because of the cwd yeah. uh pen deer deal yep and so there was three years that people couldn't bait deer and um i saw a jump hmm. in the age structure a little bit but there was also people that still kept baiting deer 100 so that's what i'm saying you're never going to stop them ever i mean yeah. even in the states like illinois there's people baiting them well, that's what we were talking about in Pennsylvania. I mean, you, you've never been allowed to bait here and still, you know, I've got a deer in the middle of timber ground, thousand acres of timber ground that's got a belly full of corn. Yeah. Can you, 
in PA, are they, can you guys supplemental feed them in the off season? Yeah, technically you can. There are some, some areas that you can't like these disease management areas, but in most areas you can, as long as you cut it off, I think 30 days before the season. Gotcha. Now that said, again, people are still doing it. And again, and I asked the resource question and again, I'm not intimately tied to the game commission here in Pennsylvania, but like, I know for a fact, they don't have enough resources to enforce that. Thus, yeah, and I don't think that it's like a major, uh, it's probably not a major thing on their list to be worried about. Sure. I'd rather them worry about poaching than that, but, you know. I mean, if they catch you, I'm sure they're going to do whatever, but are they lo- truly looking for it? I don't know. But yeah. I know if you was to take a helicopter or an airplane and fly around Ohio in wintertime, it would look like little uh, golden. Yeah. Yes glows everywhere well i think that's where like again early season two but i think that late season is where there's truly a big advantage you know when you're in october november i mean it helps i mean it's it's but... right in line with gun season it, i mean it's right oh, yeah. when those bucks are you know they've been doing some breeding and them does are going to still come to the corn pile and those bucks will just follow them right that's when the big ones get killed off corn piles yeah. guns gun opening season. day gun season yeah yeah you know and i get i catch flack for saying i don't agree with baiting but you know for hunting you know, people get mad about it, but I mean, it's just how I feel. You know, I just don't, mm-hmm. I feel like it's too easy to kill a deer like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like there's no challenge in it really. Well, and that's what puts us in a weird spot because I mean, Jared and I have openly talked just like we are right now that like, obviously in Ohio and Kentucky and Kansas, like we bait, but it's because if we didn't, the neighbor's still baiting. And I know that seems hypocritical to a point, but it's like, I wish I didn't have to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I'll be honest. I have not spent. So this year is the first year I myself have not bought one bag of corn yep. in 2022. So yeah, far. we have it. We Me were either. just talking about it this morning. In fact, if I do put one, uh, out, I'm just fighting it. Now I've got yeah. some guys that hunt on some of the farms I do and they, they are, and they've got some feeders and stuff in which I'm fine with it. Yeah. But, um, I just, I don't know, man. I'm just so against it. Now, big time, you know, they give me some because, you know, I'm sponsored by them. You know, Joe sent me some, some stuff, but it's more or less for, he knows I use it a lot. Like, um, it's like maintenance time. It's like, you know, high protein stuff. So as like, as season starts to wear down, like gun season's over, then I start feeding them again because I'm trying to keep them in there. Like right before gun season, I'll start feeding some deer, trying to keep them on the farms. Yeah. Yeah. You know, trying to survive them. But isn't that funny? uh, I feel like we do like again, even though we're like, oh, you know, I don't like baiting, but we're going to do it. We use it almost as more of a defense technique. I do for sure. 100%. I try to, you know, that's a hundred percent what I do. Yeah. And again, it's, now, I'm not going to say I've never killed a deer around corn because yeah, I have, I'm for just sure. saying it, as I get older, I find it more, I'm using it to keep them alive and keep them in an area before dark. <laughs> So you know, and I try to do that with my food pots too. I try to set my food pots up in the same spot in the same way. Yeah. Trying to hold deer in. I mean, what a predicament though, dude. It's like, I mean, we're spending a whole year, you know, dreaming about killing, like, let's say it's a 200 inch deer. And it's like, if one is showing up on a corn pile, even if we're using it for, you know, to, to get them through the season or whatever, it's like, can we really say we're not going to go do it? Like, yeah. If we're, it, no, if we're going to kill that deer. Yeah. I mean, what, <laughs> what a weird predicament to put ourselves in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I see kind, what you're you know, saying now. It, it's always it's always going to be a weird thing. Cause it's just like, it's just like a guy that shoots a traditional bow. Mm-hmm. You know, he probably thinks I'm cheating because I'm shooting a, yeah. you know, a bow sure. that shoots 305 feet per second with a two and a half inch, you know, two and a quarter inch broadhead, yeah. you know? So yeah. I, I guess it's to each their own, you know, we're all hunters. We still need to be supportive of each other. And, yeah. you know, we can all disagree and you can voice your opinion, but there comes a point where you can't, hate somebody or be mad at somebody for doing something that's legal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the, that's the big piece of it is, you know, when you get into this thing there, unfortunately, whether you can bait in the state or not, there's still people doing shit that's illegal, you know, and, and figuring out ways to cheat the system. And, you know, those are the guys that are giving us all a bad name and causing more issues for us. But just like a bad logger can make it hard on a good logger. 100%, Hundred percent, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, had a guy, I had a, looked at a property the other day that basically guy came in and took everything fourteen inches and and over off, like just 
gone mm-hmm. and it's like well yeah there's like nothing good left on this property yeah yeah <laughs> like it, you couldn't it, cut a ride and switch out of this place <laughs> yeah, there, buddy <laughs> there's nothing man is is gone you know and it he just thought that was the right way to do it you know because he yeah. didn't have a forester look at it and you know didn't have somebody that was knowledgeable to come in and talk to him about it and yeah i mean i get it but yeah. that's how you know even as a timber buyer and a timber company i mean i really try to help people make the right choices. You know, some people have goals, like they, they need the money, so they sure. got to cut what they can. But, but in all honesty, when you start getting to a 14 inch tree, you're not getting much out of that tree. No. By the time you slab it up on a mill, there's really nothing there. Yeah. So like, I don't even really want to cut trees under 18 inches. Yep. Well, and I mean, yeah. for your business too, I mean, if you help educate them on the sustainability, that should be a recurring business v- venture for you. Exactly. Maybe it's not every year. I try year. to create future clients. hundred percent. Yeah, you know, and these I other guys don't. I want to be able to go back and cut timber in their woods again. In fact, tomorrow, the next week, I got I got to go look at a woods that I cut in '97. Wow. When I was a young man, and uh, but it hasn't been touched again. And I remember doing a really nice job in it, and so I'm really excited to see how it bounced back. You know how it looks, and because mm-hmm. I left good trees in it then, so it'll be exciting to see. And I've been in numerous woods two and three times over my lifetime already, and it's wow. really awesome to watch them, yeah, progress and develop and go in and take really good timber again. It's just, it's awesome to see that. Well, and I mean, that's what, you know, whether you're talking timber or, you know, a deer herd, like that is the sustainability around it to, to make sure that, you know, over time you're able to kill multiple five and six year olds off a property. You know, it just takes patience and management and it takes sacrifice, you know, and if people aren't around you, aren't willing to sacrifice, it ain't going to happen. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Dude, where would we be without our Hoyt bows? Probably shooting crossbows. <laughs> or, or a Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> One in the same. Yeah. But in all seriousness, we love being Hoyt guys because you stand out. When you're in this room full of other people that shoot these other types of bows, I feel like the Hoyt guys just stick out. Uh, Dude, it's just a legit bow. I mean, th- th- especially that carbon riser, man. I mean, I-, I know that they've got several other aluminum lines as well. But for, for me, I'm shooting that RX-5 uh, in the carbon model. They've since come out with the RX-7. And uh, I can't tell you how much I love being a Hoyt guy amongst a C4 of Matthews guys. So we're out there, I think, pr- proving them wrong, shooting 80 pounds and uh, you know, killing stuff. Hey, man, if you want to get serious, get Hoyt. So, hey, let me ask you a question. So, uh, since I got you guys connected with Mark, how'd that go? With Mark? Was good? Mark yeah. Green, was it? Yeah, it was oh, yeah. pretty awesome, get the man. podcast yet. Has that dropped yet? Yeah, we dropped yeah, it. It dropped. We'll send you a link. Yeah, it was really good, man. He, uh, we, we caught him on vacation at Lake of the Ozarks, and uh, we got his mom on for a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I, think, I think that loosened him up a little bit, but uh, no, it was good, man. It It's funny because I think we brought you up several times, and it's just because like when we talk to guys like you and like Mark, I feel like we're talking to ourselves. It's like, okay, these guys want to just kill big deer. That, <laughs> that, that was my takeaway from talking with Mark. I was like blown away in a good way. I was like, that dude is into deer. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Mark is like, and Mark is on a different level in a sense of like, Mark is so analytical in the way he thinks about things, mm-hmm. you know, but that's why they came, you know, that's how they came up with deer cast. I mean, years ago, you know, him and him and Terry were developing deer cast, not even knowing they were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fun. You know, the way that they kept records and yep. just analyzed everything. They're both so intelligent and such good businessmen yep. and they've been such a great, and I'm not saying it just because they're my friends, but, they've just been such a good asset to the sport of hunting. And I mean, man. they've literally, in my opinion, they have literally changed hunting. I agree. Like I, I, I really do believe they are like one of the most influential people in the sport as far as like what they've done to the sport, like people wanting to manage deer or mm-hmm. giving people that like taking it to the next level. Cause I mean, I've watched them do it. Like, you know, I can remember when I first started watching stuff with them, they were pounding one twenties and loving it, you know, but everybody progressed. And that's what people have to remember when they watch people like us, that we were right there at one time too, man. Yeah. It's like, don't feel bad if you shoot a one twenty, but as you get older and you hone your skills, you're, you'll find yourself wanting to better yourself, you know, yeah. but it's just neat to see where they've come. And like, I, you know, like I think Mark is, 
one of the guys, you know, responsible for changing land prices in Iowa and like sure. making people want to be in the Midwest and, you know. Yep. Well, I think too, when you, when you talk to Mark and you kind of understand, like if you look back to those, those days, you know, they had how many TV shows, right. On outdoor channel and stuff. Frankly, they were one of the few groups on TV that, you know, made a big jump and said, Hey, we also need to produce all this digital content too, with, you know, on YouTube and do all this other stuff. And then obviously DeerCast came in. So, you know, I mean, again, like you said, these guys are business smart to the point where they're, they're going to do what's best for their brand and their business overall. Um, you know, and I don't think you see that in some of these other places, you know, cause it's hard to make a pivot after you've just been making TV shows all your whole life. Yeah. Well, they're in, but you know, the thing with those guys is, is like, so Terry, you know, he had, had an excavating construction business, still yeah. does, I think yeah. for years, you know, I mean, so these guys know how to, you know, and their dad was, you know, super good guy, intelligent, you know, businessman, you know, um, hard worker. So they learned the right way. And, you know, Mark's always been into, you know, always had some kind of an other income, whether he was a consultant to like, you know, the people that bought mad calls or whatever mm -hmm. he was doing, he's just been, they've just been super smart about not keeping all their eggs in one basket, but yet being able to grow what they've started and turn it into this crazy business that Drury Outdoors is now. You yeah. Know? Well, and the, and the guy just loves killing big deer. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, That's his, it. it's where he, he lives. But you know, I bet if you asked Mark, what would he hunt? first turkeys or deer i bet he would pick turkeys i bet he would too really he's a turkey nut yeah i don't think we even talked I mean, about the that. dude loves smashing turkeys and i mean to listen to him call turkeys i mean i'm a good turkey hunter and i've killed gazillion turkeys but that's just because i'm a good woodsman and i can call just good enough and you know because anybody do the do right thing <laughs> but it's very to interesting to hear that yeah, but to sit beside that dude and listen to him call turkey, yeah, it's insane. It's an art form. It's it is, man. It is ridiculous to hear him run a call. Well, I like, think a lot of just, people, a lot of people don't like put together that like Mad Calls is Mark Drury. Yeah, like yeah, it, Mark you know, Allen Drury. Yeah, and so they don't they don't make that connection. They see Drury as this TV guy, but if you look at Mad Calls and what that was and and, and still is, like, I mean, that's a huge turkey market that. You know, people just don't fathom, you know, they don't look at them that way. Yep. But yeah, it was, it was a cool, cool conversation. I know you don't want to miss a turkey in front of Mark because he gets ticked off. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, after he works to get it. I got some good stories on that one, but it's all, we always laugh, but it's funny. Like, you know, cause he takes it so serious and I do too. Like I remember jumping up and my son had missed a turkey. He had missed like three turkeys in one day <laughs> oh, and he no. was like 14 in the last one he missed, finally, I just, I just, I just couldn't take it no more. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you know, I've been trying to be easy on all the other ones. Like, you know, I don't want to ruin him, but man, the other ones we call two long beards right into his lap. And I mean, he, boom, like, he wasn't even close. <laughs> I didn't say a word. I got up, walked over and just kicked a decoy 50 yards across the woods. I'm like, let's go. You're shooting like your mother. <laughs> yeah. oh, but you take it so so to heart, you know, yeah. we were burning up all our good spots and it was just like, that's like when I take my kids in the woods and like, I'm like trying to be quiet and like every step he takes, he steps on a twig for some stupid reason. I finally look back and I'm like, stop it. <laughs> just mm -hmm. do not step on another stick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we just, we take it serious, man. I thought one thing that well, was interesting. Yeah. thing. One one thing that was interesting about Mark and and Ben, maybe you fall into this category, is basically it seems like Mark basically goes in and plants, sets it up, puts cameras out, and he doesn't go back until he's ready to kill something. He's not on yeah. those farms at all. Yeah. yeah. That's I I try to roll that way in the places that I can. Yeah. But there's a lot of places that I can't. And then there's a lot of places that I don't do anything to. I just go and hunt them yeah. when it's time. Yeah. Like I go and rely on the calling techniques, you know, things like that. Like Kansas. I never make a trip to Kansas. Mm -hmm. I've never scouting. I don't do anything until I get there. Hmm. I always remember things from the year before or scout while I'm out there. Yeah. Hang stands, trim trees. If I'm in a, if I'm hunting a farm and I walk by a good tree and I know that there's a reason why that tree could be good, I'll trim it right then. So that way, if down the road, I mean, I killed a deer that way three years ago out there, hung a stand in the dark in a tree that I'd trimmed two years earlier. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Did you not you draw know, for Kansas this year? I didn't draw. Holy cow, man. That's getting crazy. It's hard. Yeah, and I always used to draw that zone every time. Yeah. I first mean, time I've never drew. That was mine last year. Is was the first time that I haven't drawn, and then this time, this year we did. It's like the sickest feeling because I wasn't used to it. It was I, like I, uh, it was like losing a game. You know, you should win. I blame Jared. I was like, dude, I always draw. And now I go in on a group with you, and I don't. Yeah, I haven't drawn. I didn't draw twice in the last five years. You're, you're the Kansas bad wow. luck. Yeah, it's getting. I mean, I thought it would get better after like 2020 and like the major COVID rush. I thought people would be like, all right, like life goes on. I'm not gonna go to co- Kansas and hunt anymore, but it seems like just as many people are applying for applications per the stats. Mm-hmm. You know, they say that there's not as many hunters as there used to be. Boy, I sure don't see I it. don't believe it either, man. We talked about that the other day. We, I mean, when we were in Illinois, I've never seen so many hunters during the rut out there. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just Cody, think- <laughs> my buddy Cody on our team, Cody Griffin, he shot a deer this year on video on public land. It's not a giant deer, but it's a nice deer. He shot it on camera that's with an another Illinois, guy right? within 35 yards. That's in Illinois, that's right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. We were out there at the same time. Like, it was crazy. Same thing. It was terrible. Every Everywhere lot. we went, it was like freaking packed full of guys. Or we yeah, He said, I've never been in a place. Well, like one, like Holden lost one of his cameras. Somebody mm-hmm. stole it in the amount of time he went out to his truck and come back or something. Like, Holy it's just cow. nuts. Yeah. Well, dude, every parking lot was full. <laughs> yeah, every parking lot was full. So even if we wanted to like walk two miles in, we're gonna walk by four guys before we get back there. You know, it was terrible. Yeah, that was. Yeah, not now fun. you've got all these, you know, fit, you know, whatever these fit hunters that you know they think it's uncool to hunt anything less than three miles. So your competition <laughs> going in deep is just as high as it was. Yeah, yeah. Hunting close before now. They're out there rocking saddles. I, I think yeah. there I think there could be like less hunters overall, but I think there's a lot more guys hunting the archery season and for a lot more. Oh yeah, a lot yeah, more 100%. of the season. Well, and that's I mean, you know yeah. I think that that's definitely changed. You know, like states now that are like just like Ohio, archery season completely changed when they legalized crossbows. Yeah, yep. yeah, like no for doubt. archery season. So it like it just opened the door to so many other people that were like, oh, I you know I'd like to bow hunt, but. I don't shoot a compound or I don't want to practice a lot with it, but I can go buy this cross gun and I can yeah. shoot mm-hmm. it. You well, know, I think that's what happened in Kansas. Good. I think that's why we have so many applications in Kansas is all these guys that are able to go and just hunt with a crossbow in Kansas during archery season. Yeah. And I, I mean, I make people really mad when I say that, but so do we, so I mean, we. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like crossbows should have their own season, Me too. you know, or like, yeah. Dude, it I, should I, be like gun season. I if bet you want to hunt. Unless you're like physically disabled or a kid, um, a, a, a kid, yep. you know, something like that or older, I get it. Totally get it. And I support it because I don't want anybody yeah. not to be able to hunt. Sure. But it's not archery. No. Like Dude. my, in terms of, it's not an archery weapon to me. It's agreed. It's got a scope. I, I mean, it's got an optic on the top, a magnification optic. Dude, on I, the top. I, bet, yeah. I bet it's a ridiculous number too. I bet you like in PA, I bet it's 70% of bow hunters are crossbow hunters like a crazy I was looking so like just real quick we got a salesman that he reps for 10 point in wicked ridge great guy and i mean i'm super thankful to the guy because he actually just donated a crossbow to a, a young kid that i know that's been battling cancer for a few years and yeah um so like i'm very thankful for that i'm not knocking him like oh you should never use one mm-hmm. i'm just saying i don't think it's the same as hunting with a compound or a recurve or sure. stick you know, something like that in the early season, but you know, there's a place for him. But I was looking in that magazine or their pamphlet the other day, cause he was sh- They were talking about what bow they were going to send this kid. So I was looking at it, dude, there's crossbows in there that are $4,600. Oh, it's nuts, man. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think one of them was like five grand. Yep. Shoots I'm 500 like, feet per second. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's well. Wild. I mean, dude, look at like box blinds. It's a kind of a similar comparison. Like we're used to hunting out of hang on tree stands that you could buy for eighty bucks, you know, and now it's like thirty two hundred dollars for a box blind. I like box blinds though. Well, I, think I love box blinds <laughs> for sure. Cheap blind. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think too on the on the side of that, it, it'd be like if somebody said, "Well, I shoot recurve or longbows, and you shoot a compound." Like it's harder for me. Yeah, dude. I would they're never. Right. They're I would never right. argue with that. I'd be like, absolutely, yeah, it absolutely. is. They're right. Well, but the answer and the difference is that we would be willing to, if that's the case, if there's going to be a season for it, we'll, we'd be out there with stick and strings. Oh, if they said like, "Here's the season," and you guys, yeah, a hundred percent. Well, because if that's the argument, they're not wrong. Yes, they uh, just said what we would do. Yeah. Yeah. But I would call her bluff and say, I'll be out there with a stick yeah, of shine. I mean, it's it's great for kids. I, I love it for kids. It's a good way for my kids to get involved. But, like, eventually it's like, okay, you're not shooting a crossbow anymore. You're going to shoot a compound. But right yeah. now they can't pull 40 pounds, so they're not going to kill anything. Yeah. I'm just – I'm agree. I'm just saying, like, if you're if you're 24 years old and you're strong and you're a healthy person, yep. I just don't see that you should – why you would want to shoot. And my, I don't think a lot of the younger generations are now, but I may be wrong. But, uh, I yeah. think it's still – it's more than you think because we we pay attention, I think, to this upper ten percent of the hunting population who's involved and who loves to post pictures and be involved. But the ninety percent of the hunting population is the dude who blows the dust off his gun the night before the season and just goes out and shoots whatever, you know. Yeah. And, and we try to manage this ten percent. Meanwhile, it's under you know it's the iceberg under the water that essentially is going out there and killing most of the deer. It's like those memes that you see, like where people are like, "You've you've worked your butt off all year uh -huh. to grow this deer and do this," and then it shows like a picture of like Hunter Biden smoking a cigarette yeah. or something. Yeah. It's like all for tomorrow, this guy to go get a gun at Walmart and blow that 100%. deer down. <laughs> well, and that's it. Like I don't. If I hunt a deer all year long, long, and then somebody that like really hunts hard kills it, like I'm still pissed. But like, cool. Like that dude busted his butt. Yeah. He killed it. Whatever. Yeah. But if it's somebody who, like, frankly, like the goose situation, your buck, that, like, dude just walked out smoking a cigarette, eating a bologna sandwich, and shoots this deer, like, I'm, it, it hurts, hurts a lot hurts more. more. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does. You want them to deserve it. That happens it, a lot. All right, the time. Yeah, I think it happens I said more bad hunter kill, bad hunters kill big deer all the time. All the time. Not yeah. consistently. Well, it's just like, it's just like during Ohio Youth Gun. Yep. And you see all these pictures of these eight, nine-year-old kids with a 200-inch deer or a 180 or something. You're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. The kid doesn't even well, know dude, what he shot. That, that's probably tied to our feelings about, like, uh, baiting deer and crossbows. Like, we want the person to kill it to, like, really have, have earned it, you know. and Or appreciate it more or than appreciate anything. appreciate it. Yeah, and practicing or being killing one not over bait is that's how like you like my kids live in the woods, but if one of them shot a 170 tomorrow, they couldn't fathom what they killed. Right. They're just not at that level. They haven't spent enough time to to understand what that would be like. Yeah. You know, and that's but that's part of like killing four points and two year old eight points and stuff to get to that level where you're like, oh my God, I just go to one seventy. Like this is a well, that's what I'm saying though about the compounds and crossbows is it makes something like that more doable. Like your you know, your young kid go, could go out with a crossbow and a corn pile 100%. and kill something like that. Yeah. Prematurely. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, Briar, my he's fourteen now, but you know, he was, you know, he sh started shooting a crossbow at like eight, nine years old. And, but yep. I would never let him shoot big bucks ever. Like, I just didn't agree with him. Like, I wanted him to learn <laughs> it. What a, what a great and, parent situation. You know, it's not even that. Just like when we went hunting, it was, I never took a weapon. But I wanted him to just progress yeah. slowly and see what it took. And he did. And then when he shot, he shot a doe at the age of 11 with a compound. Yeah. When he first could start pulling 45 pounds, yep. 40 pounds, you know. And I think he was as excited to kill that deer as anything. Hundred percent. He, he appreciated it because he understood the challenge with the compound. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying is like, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of grown adults who've hunted their entire life who, frankly, just haven't killed a lot of deer. He'll go out and shoot a 150 inch buck this year, and they won't truly appreciate like how rare that that is for a hunter. Yeah. They just won't. Because they can't fathom it because they haven't had enough experience with things that are less than that, you know? And that's what crossbows let people do, you know? The fact that you can go out with a crossbow, shoot 50 yards, door in the rut with a magnification scope. There's a lot of big bucks that die. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So, but if it's legal, do it. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Stealth Cam. Dude, where would we be without our cell cams? I would definitely be divorced at this point. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I mean, the fact is, is I spent more time checking cameras than I actually did hunting prior to cell cameras. Now, at least my wife can enjoy me being in the comfort of my own home, buried in my phone, checking those pictures. Yeah, 100%. And dude, when it comes to 
Uh, trail cameras and definitely stealth cameras. Reliability is, I think, the number one thing that we're looking for. Stealth Cam just has a long reputation of reliable cameras, and ultimately that is the most important thing to us. They have to work. In terms of reliability, there's not a better camera on the market than Stealth Cam, whether you're talking about the Fusion X, the Reactor, or the DS4K Transmit. And most of them are under 200 bucks. StealthCam.com, check them out. Well, dude, we've been watching a lot of your stuff. You've been dropping mm -hmm. here lately. We drop them like one one a week. Yeah, you like them? Heck yeah, yeah. I've watched every one so far, I think. I really like the, I know we talked about it, was your, uh, that Illinois buck that you went in and, mm -hmm. and so like. T-Post? Is that what it was? Well, T-Post is on the farm that I bought. No, the one that you. you scissors got, will drop scissors. this coming Monday. Yeah, the yeah, giant so, framed so one. So I saw that because it's in like what, the preview or whatever that. Yeah. And like so. I can, I can like imagine you sitting like right off of that, that bedroom and him coming through there and be like, holy shit. Do you have any of those mounts back from last year? Yeah, they're yeah they're all back. Holy any man. chance we can see any of them? So actually, I don't know what you can see or how well, but like that's T post right there on the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right nice. here. Perfect six by six, huh? Yeah, very cool. That's scissors right there. Yeah, so that's scissors. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> There's so many bucks. Jesus. <laughs> that's hilarious. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> and what was it? What'd you get? Was it four? Four, four in like Still 10 turning. days? <laughs> Jesus. That's too funny. <laughs> what was it? Like, it, was it four bucks in, in what, like 10 days this year? 12 days. 12 yeah, days. 12 days. <laughs> That's the two, two hundo. Yeah. Two fifteen this year's ago. I remember ago. that video. What a This is the 204 right there. Mm. Where'd you kill him at? Ohio. Oh, yeah. There's one and down there's big Illinois buck. That was cool. That's great master right there. Yep. Yeah. Down here. Jeez. Look at the brow. What's that one right there with the big brow? Right here was I killed this deer the year that Waddy and those guys hunted here with me. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Hammers, dude. Um, I know that one. That's one of the first. That's killed, my right? first big one. Yeah. First real giant. Jesus. That is a giant. Some pretty crazy brows on some of those deer. This is a cool deer. This picket right there. Yep. Split, split fours. Yep. But this Man. deer, this one here, and this one. Are there any three year olds on that wall? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> actually, I know this deer right here is this one is a four year old. That mm. one is. Mm -hmm. I've got some on the ground. Well, I got lots like of this deer right here. <laughs> this deer was only a. I would say this one right here was only a four-year-old, but I passed. He might even only been three and a half, but I only shot him because he. That's see how weak his one side got. Something happened to him. Are those those three deer, the one you're holding and the two above you? Those on are aren't all from the same property, are they? Um, same general area with these big brows. Yeah, man. But like this, this one is different. This is Morrow County, okay, Ohio. But that's a different. Yeah, I'm just totally looking different area. This was Coshocton County. Yeah, those brows um, are pretty characteristic there. Yeah. But it's, same general area within probably a mile and a half as a crow flies. Dude, that's, those that's, two. That first big one you killed is a giant. That frame? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where did he go? He was 184 as a nine point. Mm. Damn. That's 184 as a nine point. Yeah. That's just gross. I mean, that's her, yeah, we that's don't, her we profession. Don't, we don't brother. care about yeah. that at all. That's brute. He's nice. got that. 17 inch extra beam there it's pretty cool kind of like our that's just a big old 160s deer from illinois just a big, big old, old 160s sucker Has, does briar have it, briar? Nose pump. does briar have What's a buck that? on that wall yet no this is in the garage <laughs> briar hasn't hunted for like two years oh yeah yeah just taking a break or not into it he or? Did he, girl in and playing ball did oh, he yeah. break his arm too well, that was a while ago. But ben ben like, broke his arm when like he missed that turkey. <laughs> yeah. This one's a really cool deer. I mean, it's only a skull mount, but that's a good deer. Uh, yeah. I kill him. Nice. I have them scattered all over the place. I have a bunch in the back room, too, but they're not quite that big. But You're running yeah. out of space there. You're going to either have to high-grade some stuff. I know. I got to do something or... different. 
Yeah, dude. Actually, something. you know, it's funny because I'm probably as proud of this as, as I am anything. I don't even see this. Spurs. But yeah. look at those spurs on wow. that dude. That, that looks like the one that Jared killed one in Pennsylvania this year. That those, has no. Those, those are, are giants. Yeah. 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 That's inch and thirteen sixteens. I Holy shot Holy cow! Wow. Where was yeah. that? Was that Ohio? That's Ohio. Yeah, wow. but it was like three, about four years ago. Damn, man, that's crazy. <laughs> well, I guess we gotta let Ben go. He's he gotta go to what the county fair. He got a hog, yeah, got hog fraction. Uh, well. 4-H's auction at the county fair here. They're having the hog sale tonight. Got to make sure so none of those bastards get out of kids, line. But, <laughs> yeah, but uh, first get out of line. I get to, I get to use. He them. looks like uh, what's his name with uh, Will Ferrell doing old yeah. school. He's yeah, carrying yeah. around the dart gun. Sean, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just got to make sure none of these bad boys get, get out of your line, neck, man. <laughs> So did you guys download DeerCast? You have it? Yeah, yeah, we've got it. Mark gave us the whatever, the pro version or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? It's a, yeah. he, he basically said if we download it, we'll kill big bucks like Ben Rising. So yeah. uh, Download. <laughs> yeah, we got I, it. I can hear him saying that. <laughs> we got um, it. So we'll just have to uh, – we'll put it to the test it, this year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little different model than what, you know um, – like other apps, but I think it's, I think I've been really spending a lot of time, which I've always been using it, but I've spent a lot more time on it recently looking at like the analytical side now that they added maps and stuff, yeah. but it's really just kind of a whole, I don't know how you say it. Like in simpler terms, it's, I think it's going to be easier for people to use once they really learn how to use it. Yeah, so like for watching sure. those barometers and you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That rain gauge, thing is pretty cool to be able to put that over a plot and use the like radar to determine if you got because normally you're just sure. pulling off of whatever the nearest weather station is well that's not going to do shit yeah you yeah know? i i think that rain gauge is a serious good tool yeah it's making me cry though i got a place in missouri and i mean i it's like a drought out there is it that's so crazy bizarre. wow i've heard that um in like central pa to the east like it's bone dry out there meanwhile we're getting rain every freaking day here yeah well mark said the same thing about his iowa farms i don't just that was a while ago but he said it was pretty dry yeah kentucky yeah. i don't hammered. know i don't think it's rained where i hunt in missouri i don't think it's rained within the last 25 days Jeez. wow i did see that our, our nodak is like fully out of drought now out of drought mm -hmm. good to know mm -hmm. fully out give it another year mm -hmm. it'll be back and running but yeah, hey, how's your Ohio farm looking, Jeremy? Well, I, I, yeah, I kicked some crackheads off, so that was good. Um, no, cool. But yeah, no, it's it's good. I got um, plots in, what, last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, last week got plots in. Um, I got a ton of bucks on that place right now. You know, probably only two or three that are four or older. Um, you know, but it'll be interesting to see what it pulls in come, you know, acorns start it's dropping. It's mainly a this, timber track, though. Was yeah, it? it's big timber track with six acres and no the prior food so i mean that'll change things yeah so yep. i mean there's yeah. a lot of d i mean and you know i probably have 16 different bucks on 100 acre 130 acres right now so there's a lot you'll get there. a giant you'll get a hog showing up well there's some like you said there's some big timber down in that southern part you know and so if you can keep your neighbors clean and off of your back you'll you'll get a big buck down in there for sure but and I think I'm in good spots. There's other people not so lucky that have bought down there recently. I talked to. I mean, they got their neighbors are whacking and stacking everything they have. Mine, I'm fortunate, I guess, than that. Uh, a former game warden down there leases basically every piece of ground around me, and he hunts about six guys on it a year. Oh, so, gotcha. But That's I mean, good. you're talking three thousand acres for six guys. Or something. That's the hardest thing about buying any kind of land out yeah, of state. Man or any kind of distance away is, or even leasing. That's it. You know, it's 100%. so hard to know what you're going to get into or deal with. And, yep. you know, I, I've had the worst luck ever in Kentucky trying to, to lease or hunt ground because got, of the neighbor. We've got one that we lucked out with, you know, cause I've got 75, well, I've got 150 now that I'm hunting down there, but we, Jared and I leased, what is that? 300 acres, I guess. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. but he's, he is the county game warden. He just doesn't have time to hunt, and so he leased it to us. And I mean, there's there's at least one really big buck on there this year, and there should be several. But you know, beyond mm -hmm. that, yeah, we're in the same boat, man. We we leased what twelve or thirteen properties last year. 
And I bet all of them but one was dog shit that it's we dropped. Huge waste of money. Really? Huge waste of money. Yeah. Yeah. Are you uh, you still on that big deer in Ohio? Yep. In fact, I've got cameras ready to go up. I sent them to John this week to get put up. So we'll see if he shows. I mean, I don't know if he's still alive, but if he is, I'm going to give him another run this year. First week in November. That's where I'll be. Columbus. Come find big me. Deer, man. That was a giant. Yeah, that. I mean, if that deer made it, he'll be six this year, which could be insanity. Could be his peak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is hard to believe. I mean, dude, when I saw that's what we were talking about when we got into that two hundred conversation earlier. Like, that's the for sure. That's the only deer I know of that I've laid eyes on that is over two hundred inches. You know, and watched him for two hours. Have you peaked yet, Jerry? Have I peaked yet? Yeah, have you peaked yet? Not quite. We're still right. co- we're still coming up. <laughs> yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, man. Other than that, you know, same old, same old here. Yeah. Well, well, what, what we should do is you guys watch Scissors and get back with me. Yeah, let's watch do that. that. Let's do that. We'll get the watch popcorn it. ready. Yeah, so maybe in September before season starts. Well, I'll be hunting Kentucky on the third. Mm-hmm. Is the opener? So I'll be hunting Kentucky. I'm, gonna, on the I'm missing open a day this year. I'll be on an elk hunt with my dad in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Good for you. That'd be fun. Yep. Yeah. Good we'll to spend time with your dad like that. The time doesn't last long. Well, part, I'm but, taking him to Kansas this yeah, year too. Yeah, I was say both our dads drew for Kansas with us, so it'll be the awesome. two of us and their two dads. So. I got him a new bow. I got him a whole new set of camo. We he's, gotta take care of these old guys, red, man. you know. Yeah. You know, it sucks for me is that, like my dad, you know, doing what I do now, and I the since i like got my own show and been able to you know where i could actually do some things for my dad and buying ground um my dad's eyesight i mean Mm -hmm. he's he's not old i mean he's 72 now but um his eyesight has been so bad since like 2014 13 Mm -hmm. or 14 he can't hunt he don't hunt anymore yeah and that's been it just sucks for me because like yeah you you know he spent so much time with me when I was a kid trapping and things like that. And I just can't get back to him in that sense. Yeah. You know? Is there anything he can do as far as like, I mean, dude, my dad had LASIK eye surgery and his eyes are better than mine. No, uh, it's, it's glaucoma. Yeah. Too far. And it's gone too far. He was, and the sad thing is he was, he was seeing an eye doctor years and years ago. And for like, he's saying the same guy for like 10 years and the guy kept misdiagnosing it. Jeez, giving the wrong man. And so, like, he probably could have been farther ahead if he'd have had the right doctor. Ugh. Yeah, that's uh, tough. Some um, of it could have been from when he was a nom, too. Yeah. You know? Um, well, but yeah. Can't take still, it. It is what it is. It for he, yeah. He, uh, he handles it well, though. I mean, he's been a real, I don't know how you say it, but, like, you know, it's in his terms, it's God's will. So he accepts it. And Would he be up for going been, to, like, sit with you in a blind or something? Well, I mean, he could, but he wouldn't be able to see. I mean, he's legally blind in his left eye. You know, he can barely see out of his right eye, so it's pretty tough for him to. That's all right. When you shoot, he'll just say, did you get him? Yeah. (laughs) We we were talking on the way uh, back from the convention. There was a guy that hunts with his buddy who's legally blind. Oh, yeah. And they take him out in the blind with, I don't know if it's a crossbow or a a rifle, Mm -hmm. but it's it's rigged up with like a a phone scope thing. type yeah. of deal so they yeah. can, they can see it and they'll say move a little to the right move a little to the yeah. left and then they'll tell him when to pull the trigger <laughs> yeah he just wouldn't get into that because he's Bro. you know yeah so many years of being able to do it himself and watch it you know he would yeah. just be like yeah agreed I'm yeah. Not, that'd be like if he's I, just like whatever i'll go kayaking if i told my dad yeah. to like use a crossbow because his shoulder is bad he'd be like screw it i'm not hunting <laughs> your dad he yeah. says i'll go kayaking you look out he's like upside down <laughs> yeah dude it's, the, the dude goes to gold or uh what, what's that plan of fitness? He goes to plan of fitness every day. Oh, yeah. He lives with my brother now. Uh, I, have, I haven't seen him there. Passed. He's just, he's just and, saying uh, that he can't see so they can, he can just stare at the girls and they're like, Oh, don't worry. Yeah. The old guy can't yeah, see yeah. anyways. <laughs> but yeah, he goes almost every day. He's like down to 140 pounds, 135 pounds or something. Damn. It's crazy. You can at least use him to drag out your deer then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I might take him to Illinois this year and use him as camp cook. There you go. There you go. Well, that's what, I mean, we're looking. We're trying, I mean, our biggest thing with Kansas, obviously we want to kill a big buck, but the four of us in camp just like for a week, you know, is going to be awesome. I, yeah. I, I, my dad's never hunted the Midwest. I mean, it'll be a first experience for mm-hmm. him and first for us to have. Yeah. This is my dad. Yeah, he's going to go comeback. back and be like, let's sell this farm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I hope he shoots a big deer. We're going to put him in a good spot. So it'll be fun. 
Well, cool, yeah. dude. Well, we uh, so scissors drops. Well, I guess if they're listening to this, scissors already dropped, huh? Yeah. And then what? Which number episode is scissors then? Four? I think that is five. 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 And how many? Five or six. I think it, maybe it's six. How many do you have? Yeah, it'll be episode six. Okay. So all my hunts will end at six, <laughs> and then the team guys will start. Okay. So episode seven will be one of the first guys hunts on the team, and got it. I think there'll be 13 altogether. Okay. Cool. Well, people are looking, go go to YouTube and watch Whitetail Edge. i will get you through into September, and and by that time, we're killing again. It's been getting me through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Ben, to be honest, I mean, it, and, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to pat you on your shoulder. We know that, or you know that we like you, but, like, it's it's tough Stick to find to good stuff on YouTube, man. Like, it, I feel like we've kind of watched everything, and it's like, now well, what are we going to watch? So, like... Wait Till Edge is one of those ones that keeps at least putting out new content for us, you know, and like, uh, I think what's really hard or what I struggle with is like, I used to love to read magazine articles. Yeah. Like I just really did. I used to love sitting in the evening and like maybe grab a cup of coffee and sit on the front porch or at a campfire yeah. or camping and read articles, man, they're all the same thing. Yeah. That's it, the man. Time. There's yeah. nothing new. Like, it's just somebody. And then you get these people that like you watch their show. All they did was take something from somebody else that they watched somebody else say. Hundred percent. And you could tell the ones that are BS. Yeah. Like, I, and I hate to sound like that because I don't. I don't want to be a. Sure. You know, but man, there is a lot of fake hunters out there oh right now, and a God, lot of man, it's bad. just over the top BS stuff. That, well, and there's there's some big names out there, and I won't name them, but you can make your inference of who it is. But like, I don't give a shit that you're gonna boil down bear fat and like then cook duck in it or whatever like that's just not who gives shit like i want to hear about killing big deer and finding big deer and like talking yeah. deer like, i mean everybody's it. different there's no doubt and you know i think the but it's just like i watch i, I don't watch tv shows much anymore because like the few times that i've tried to sit down and watch some hunting shows they're painful to watch yeah and i don't yeah. i just don't want people ever looking at my stuff and going that sucked yeah yeah. You know, like, and, you know, like when I used to do interviews, when you guys were helping, you know, like uh, they gave me the nickname, the one hit wonder, as far as like being able to do the interviews right now, you know, or like talk about this and I could do it. Well, I figured out and I started watching, you don't have to take two or three takes to talk about something if it's not a lie if you truly believe in what you're saying, does that make sense? Yeah. It's just genuine. Yeah. yeah. Like the knowledge easier. that you're trying to portray, it's not hard to portray that knowledge. If you know what you're really talking about, it's just like Mark, when you listen to Mark or Terry or Don Higgins or anybody talk, they're not feeding you a line of BS that they just read somewhere. Like these are things that work for them. Not everything works for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I got invited here. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but I got a call the other day from a promotion company that wants to, they do a sportsman show here in Ohio and Don Higgins and Tony LaPratt. They want to do a round table with me in that, with those two. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll happen, but if it does happen, you know, I've already thought about it. I was like, you know, just because somebody else says something doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Sure. might work for them. Just may not work for me. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. And I think everybody has different styles of hunting. And, and I think if people are smart, they try to take a little bit from everybody. Well, I mean, that's why we do this, man. It's it's awesome because we know your style. We know Higgins style. We know Sturgis' style. Like, it's good to have these conversations because we can say, not to call them out, but we can say, oh, that's interesting, man, because Don Higgins said X, you know, or, or Jeff Sturgis yeah. said Y. And that's cool because, like, we're trying – all of a sudden, like, we're actually having a discussion with – you know, the right minds in the whitetail industry to say, well, damn, man, maybe both of these are right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of that guy that's like, I can do the land management stuff. I can do all that, but I feel like I'm a guy that's really good about just being faced with the situation. Like, Hey, here's the property you get to hunt for the, you know, like if I, if I go to Kansas or I go somewhere like Illinois or wherever, if I, I can go knock on a door and start hunting a property from day one. And 
I'll find the biggest deer in there and I'll get it killed. Mm -hmm. That's just how I, I like, I actually like to roll like that. Well, yeah. frankly, you know, dude, I, that is an, an amazing skill. Yeah. Like there are not that's, many that's people. That's probably the hardest. A lot of people can plant food plots and figure out how to, yeah. to do that. To go in and figure out and, a deer and kill them, especially the biggest one in the area. Well, that's, that's what I like about the scissor hunt. Like, yeah. I mean, you pretty much were, were posed with a situation where the guy was like, yeah, like we can't kill this deer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's honestly... That's why I was so emotional to hunt because, and I've never got that emotional about a big deer unless I've had a lot of history with it when I kill one. But I think for me, like I've killed really good deer on public land, you know, people give you that challenge and I've done it, but it'd been a while since I had been challenged like this. And, and the guy wasn't challenging me, you know, he's a great guy that, that owned the farm where this deer was, but. I took it as a challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, can I do this? Can I actually go in there and kill this deer that everybody has been trying to kill? And so when I pulled it off, it was like, yeah, dude. man, that feeling was special. Yeah. Well, you know? there's not many people that can do that. That, that is the bottom line, especially, I mean, I think it's even more rare now than it was 20, 25 years ago when people actually had to have woodsman skills to go out there and kill a big buck. You know, now, you know, and it's great that we've got cameras and food plots and everything else, but frankly, you don't need to have as much skill to sit on a food plot in a box blind and kill a big buck. Well, dude, that's, yeah. that's these I public think, land guys. I mean, like Eberhardt, that's, that's what like his satisfaction is right. rooted in is like, you know, and Ben, I know you get more satisfaction, you know, or it might be more enjoyable to hunt private land where a lot of these bigger deer are, you know, but a guy like Eberhard and there's some other them public land guys that like that's that's the challenge for them is to go in and essentially yeah, compete that's their against deal. other guys yeah. and be able to pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's a special skill, you know. I mean, like, and the thing is, is if you take a guy like Eberhard and you throw him on a piece of ground like my 300 acre farm in Illinois, he's going to kill the biggest deer there at some point. He'll just do it. Yeah. You know, because he's honed his skills so well <laughs> yeah. to hunt them kind of deer that he's used to hunting. Yeah. That, but that's what made me the hunter that I am because I did that for years. Yeah. Well, and I you think know, that's I the hardest like that part too. right now is like there's a lot of people who are letting their guard down on the importance of woodsmanship and just being in the wood and woods and reading sign to where at some point that's going to pass on to the next generation. And that generation will have no freaking idea what woodsman skill looks like at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, like I, I say in that T post ton about buying my own farm, I've been there. I've done that. I've hunted those public land spots. I just don't want to burn myself out all the time hunting those spots for yeah. what I consider a mediocre deer. Yep. Agreed. You know, now I still love to do it. And I like those challenges. Like if I go out of state and things, I'm going to do it. But in my home state or in a state that I own a piece of ground, unless I really have to, I don't want to go beat my head against the wall and try to deal with people. Not at this, not at the age that I am now and the stage I am in my life. I, I don't just, think anybody does not, if they're honest with themselves. Well, I mean that we've had that conversation is like, can you really sit there and say like, you don't want to go and hunt, you know, unpressured mature bucks on a nice farm. Like, yeah, that's the dream. Like, like yeah, who, who no, doesn't I mean, want to do that? That's the goal at the end of the day. And it still doesn't make them like it like super easy to kill. They're still a five, six year old buck. I mean, they still sometimes they don't walk, sometimes they don't move. They still play the wind. They still just, you know, sometimes they'll move a little more in areas if you can figure them out. That's yeah, you know, but that's what I've learned anyways. Yeah. You know, it doesn't always make them doesn't it's not like a guarantee yeah by any means that is i've been hunting man. public land for years and i'm struggling to do it still so yeah i know it's not a guarantee at all mm. cool well awesome man we'll let you get to okay. uh the yeah. the fair and uh yeah we'll we'll Appreciate catch up with time. you here in september as before you make your whatever record run of 12 days and killing whatever four booners this year whatever you're gonna do so yeah hey do you guys have a sponsor for your clothing yet no but we You're, just bought a bunch of Sitka. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Nice. Like a lot. You should have waited. Well, yeah. we're just, we don't have a sponsor. We're just like. Well, we were wearing Predator gear for like four or five years. And like, I don't know. They just weren't ever going to do anything to grow the company. Yeah. Uh, so we I was just going to. So like, Osseo, you, you probably heard that, but like the, we actually just got some and we did a photo shoot yesterday. But dude, I'm telling you, this stuff is legit. What is it? It's called Osseo gear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. And is that Mossy Oak too? 
this is the mossy oak terahila pattern mm-hmm. and then they have their own pattern too i don't mind that pattern after. but uh this is you know geared for tree stand but man it is so hmm. it's really great bow hunting clothing i know it's hard to see but yeah this is the emblem so like you can find it but i'm just telling you like oh, yeah. if somebody's out there looking for some really affordable good clothing at the end of August, the, the Mossy Oak Terahila will be available on their website. But Yeah, that's the unfortunate um, part about Sitka. It's in line with <laughs> not Sitka, affordable. QU, all that. It's in line with that quality-wise. Really? Nice. Is but that, it's cheaper. Is that a company that you're affiliated with, or are they a, a sponsor? No, I, I have nothing to do with it. They reached out to me last year. Actually, Don Higgins is sponsored. I was going to say, too. I thought Got Don was. Yeah. They picked, I think it was three guys that they wanted to partner with <laughs> to promote it because they're all about big deer. They picked Adam. Uh-huh. Me and Don. Mm, that's mm-hmm. three decent guys. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Three guys that will deliver on some big deer. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have to so, check that out. You know, but yeah, check it out. I mean, those garments will all be under two hundred bucks. Holy cow! All right, yeah, no, that's way cheaper. I don't think anybody's ever promoted Sitka as affordable. <laughs> but I mean, it's good. Yeah, the stuff. only reason yeah. we got it, we got a fifty percent off discount through Whitetail Properties. Yeah, that's why we bought it. <laughs> so yeah, no, I get it. I mean, I get yeah, it. still expensive. So it's like I got th- you know thirty four hundred dollars worth of gear for twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't think that matters. But I mean, if up. I'm going for it, I'm going for it. That's like my next four years of, cl- of camp. I've got enough for that, that elk hunt, early season mule deer hunts, you know, yeah. all the way down to late season. So Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Cool, man. Well, you know, the company's not, or the, the America's not in a recession anyways, or the inflation is not high, so right, everything's yeah, right. great. So right. Yeah, spend, that's right. why I haven't put out a bag of corn because it's $11 per bag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's more than that. Jeez, oh, man. Well, cool. Is it? That's Have what you- I heard. I don't know. I, I... I heard that uh, fifty pound bags at like TSC were going for like, like you said, like wow. ten, eleven dollars. I, I can't believe that. At TSC, I paid I paid ten dollars at a co op in May or June. For fifty pounds for fifty pounds. Wow. Yeah, sweet wow. feed was like fourteen or fifteen dollars. It's crazy. I've never bought sweet feed. That's what I usually put. In What's my feeders. bad though is like I went through town the other day and gas was three sixty nine, and I was like, oh my gosh, gas is cheap. I got to pull in. Yeah, like, and I got crazy? trained to think that that was cheap. I know three sixty nine. That cause, is cheap. That's because the White House keeps putting out like our our gas prices are dropping, ours and it's like, still, well, yeah, dude, you took them the five dollars. Now you're dropping. Ours them. is still like four seventeen, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. three sixty nine. It's like an that's early crazy. Christmas present. Sixty nine. Why the heck are we <laughs> but, excited about that? I know. That's what I said to myself. It's like, stop getting excited. That's still too much. Yeah, ridiculous, like, dude. They're just tr- training us to think that it's great. I did see a uh, like a ribeye steak the other day for like thirty nine dollars in like a Walmart thing. I was like, what? That's yeah. Crazy. I bought a ribeye steak for thirty nine dollars. You're insane. The other day from a restaurant. I still have some of our. It also came with North asparagus Dakota. and a little. Well, yeah, rice. I'm talking about one in like the cooler. No, they're the ribeye should be like. Well, the, right now, anyways, they're like twelve bucks a pound. That's what it is. So I guess thirty. I'll be curious money. to see what these hogs go for tonight, but they always go for good money. Because Premium price. Kids. Yeah, you and, know, and everybody loves bacon. Nick, you want to put your hog up for auction? <laughs> <laughs> you got a hog, Nick? <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> he's like, what's the minimum size? <laughs> <laughs> what's the going rate? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> All right, Ben. We'll let you go to the fair, okay. man. We appreciate, appreciate it. You guys. Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Yep. Bye bye. Uh, awesome. Oh, always good talking to Ben. Cool to see his. Because uh, I mean, that is a guy who I trust when he starts thinking about big bucks on two hundred. <laughs> so he's saying he's saying multiple per county, average two hundred inch bucks. I like Ben, dude. Yeah. I. Uh, I mean, listen. First of all, if you're not watching White Tail Edge, seriously, go and watch some of those episodes. The other thing is, like, this dude, like. I'm glad he brought that up because he literally does thrive off of put him in a position to say, hey, hunt this and go kill a giant buck, and the dude will do it, and he'll do it quick too. There's not many There's not many guys. I mean, uh, all respect to the to the Bill Jordans and Michael Waddells and the Don Higgins and the Jeff Sturgis of the world. There's not many guys that I know that can be dropped in a situation and go kill a giant buck. And, I mean, yeah. the dude killed four in 12 days. He reminds me a lot of my my uncle Dale. Dale. Yeah, mm-hmm. just they they kind of look, took different paths in life. You know, Ben's had some opportunities because of the timber business and where he lives in Ohio, and also being involved with juries. Yeah, like, right. I mean, he's he's gone yeah. down a path of killing big bucks. And my uncle is passionate about the same way, but I mean, he's he's just more of a 
Uh, well, he was PA born and bred. He's, he's from PA. Our, our you know, he's in tool and die business. Just hasn't had as many opportunities. But but very much, you know, <clears throat> not so much interested in like the land management side. My, my just want to kill a big. Just buck. wants to go in, figure out the biggest buck in the area, and kill him. I love it. And that. they do it. I know, man. And it's that is there are not many guys like out there. Like I, like I take pride being able to go into like when we go to Kansas and like first day be in a situation, but like. Not like those well, guys. Well, dude, it's it's kind of hilarious. Like, his strategy for Kansas is, like, it's just it's good enough that he doesn't even think— He just goes out, f- picks Calls. a good tree, and starts rattling. Yep. And kills one every year. Kills one. Yeah. that I'll be interested to see, obviously, if they're, you're listening to this, it's out. But that scissor episode will be pretty, yeah, pretty I'm crazy. Because, I mean, this <laughs> is a buck that multiple people tried to kill, could not kill, could not see, let alone kill. And dude, like, first— First or second day goes in and kills it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nuts. yeah. I, I'd be curious to see like what the approach was there, because because I think what he did was he just like I, I'm he pretty, went and found his bedding. He area. just went in. He, he just like wasn't worried about p- pushing the deer off. He, went like, he in, just went in, found the sign, found said it, this is the spot. This is where he's at, and then just set played up the and wind, found good access. Yep, good access, played the wind, killed that buck. But yeah, he went in and said this is where this buck is at. He's gonna come through here. Yeah, and I think he used the terrain to help him with that. And then, yeah, the wind was right, access was right, and killed him. I think there's a lot to that. I mean, and we make it sound simple, but it's it's, yeah, not. Well, it's a delicate balance of like you don't want to go in and just you know just ruin an area by by trouncing through there, but you also can't know where they're at if you don't go in and and sure. read the sign, you know, figure them out. So yeah. there's there's balance there. Crazy. But really cool as well to see that. Absolutely. So, awesome. Well, we appreciate you listening to this episode of Hunter Podcast, episode 89 with Ben Rising. Nick was like, nine, say nine. Uh, Don't say eight. Don't do uh, it. And if you're looking for uh, Nick's hog at auction, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Yeah, you'll probably check out his Snapchat handle. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we'll see you next time. Later. It's taking me...